What's going on, guys? Welcome back to WWE Network and Show, where I, Graham G.S. and Matthews, break down all the original content they watch on the WWE Network and on Peacock. And today we're talking the September 17, 2022 edition of the SmackDown Lowdown, featuring Matt Camp, Jackie Redman in the studio, breaking down Friday's SmackDown. Uh, they open up the episode running down the biggest headlines from the show, including replaying Logan Paul's promo to start the show, challenging Roman Reigns to a match at Crown Jewel, uh, which is going to be made official today at the Las Vegas press conference, very likely for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship, uh, before recapping Ricochet versus Sami Zayn. Very good match there, won by Ricochet. Backstage, Sarah Schreiber, not Sarah, I always get the two fucking mixed up. Uh, Megan Morant, my apologies. It, it's a lot of alliteration to Megan Morant, Sarah Schreiber. Sarah Schreiber catches up with uh, Ricochet backstage, who said that he liked giving Bloodline a taste of their own medicine and he'll never back down. As far as Logan Paul and Madcap go, he says Logan Paul can get the job done, and he calls Madcap Moss a specimen. Uh, back in the studio, they welcome on JBL, who has been uh, conspicuous by his absence on SmackDown in the recent weeks. I don't think he was actually there when they hinted the alliance between him and Happy Corbin a few weeks ago. It sounded like they just dubbed it in, the audio of him saying uh, to Corbin, oh, I'll get in my limo, and they drove off. We haven't heard a single thing about that. I don't think it's been acknowledged. There has been no follow-up on that. They did allude to it at the end of this episode, which I'll get to soon enough. So this was the only instance where I was like, oh, it's good to see JBL because hopefully we can get an update on the uh, Corbin stuff. And Matt Camp, being a good journalist, asked him about it at the end. So we'll get to that momentarily. But um, yeah, I, I got the feeling, and I mentioned this in my SmackDown audio review from earlier today, that it's very likely that they're probably just keeping him off TV for now and then bringing him back with a new character, and they just don't want to mention it, so it's more of a surprise when he does resurface in the next couple weeks, month from now, whatever. Anyway, uh, so JBL calls Logan Paul a once-in-a-generation guy, and he's a fan of what he's doing right now with Roman and calling him out and challenging him to a match at Crown Jewel. Uh, Jackie Redmond says that all he needs is one shot to dethrone Roman, which would be fucking awful if it actually happened. Uh, making reference to an Eminem lyric, one shot and whatever, I thought that was well done. Uh, JBL then makes fun of Matt Cam's shirt before they recap Sami Zayn versus Solo, not Sami Zayn, I'm sorry, uh, Mad Cat Moss versus Solo Sokoa, and uh, Zayn helping Sokoa uh, retain the NXT North American Championship. Matt Cam praises the fact that Sokoa is the first man to defend the North American Championship on SmackDown. It, I think it's appeared on SmackDown before, I mentioned this in my review earlier. I think Gargano held the belt at the time that he and Ciampa had that one-off on SmackDown back in early 2019 against the Bar and on Raw as well earlier that week against the Revival. Could be wrong. Pretty sure that was the case, though. I remember them walking out with the championships. Um, Anyway, so uh, they mentioned that, uh, you know, he's not shy, that being Solo. He, you know, can't mention that he's not shy about stepping into the spotlight. Before they recap, Bailey's win over Raquel Rodriguez. Uh, Shotzi is caught up with backstage by Megan Morant, not Sarah Schreiber. And uh, Shotzi, who is still without a last name, who hopefully will get it back soon, back to being a babyface, thankfully. Uh, she says that she has a problem with bullies, even though she acted like one, which she didn't mention here, uh, like in Sasha Banks last year. But she has a problem with bullies, and she wanted to make an example out of damage control, and that's why she saved Raquel on SmackDown. So short and sweet stuff here from Shotzi. They replay the Liv Morgan Ronda Rousey segment and uh, hyping up their Extreme Rules match for the SmackDown Women's Championship at the pay per view. Um, they also recap the fatal four way tag team main event with the Brung Brutes emerging victorious to become the new number one contenders to the undisputed WWE tag team titles next week on SmackDown against the Usos. Um, Sheamus backstage along with uh, Bro- uh, Butch in Ridge Holland, the Brung Brutes. Uh, Sheamus tells uh, Megan Morant that they are the ones to stop the bloodline because they can put on banger after banger after banger. And again, another short interview because that was it. Uh, very brief. Brief stuff from the Brawling Brutes. Uh, JBL says that the Brawling Brutes, he, he says here initially that they're probably not ready. He clarifies after and says he feels they are ready, but he just doesn't think they'll win. So just to kind of backtrack on that, he, I guess. Um, he also says that he thinks Liv Morgan can handle a match with Rousey and she's trying to make a statement. She has a big chance of winning, he says, which I don't agree with. Um, although I like Liv, I just don't think she's going to win. I mean, maybe she will with the help of Shayna, but I just I just don't see a scenario where that happens, aside from maybe Shayna interfering and helping Liv win, either inadvertently, you know, helping her out, becoming her new heavy, whatever. So um, he does say that Liv will be a champion for a long time. That, that's what he says, which again, I, I can't say I see that being the case. Uh, Matt Camp says it doesn't matter if Morgan wins clean because Jackie asks him, oh, does it matter if she finally wins clean against Ronda? And he goes, hey, listen, it's an extreme rules match. It's not going to be clean. It doesn't matter. And uh, he also says it's going to be a tall task for Liv to walk out of that match. Still champion, Camp says. Um, JBL says that Rousey is this generation's Ken Shamrock. 
don't know if I'd go that far, but I could see the similarities, obviously. And as far as the Corbin stuff, because before they go off the air, Camp gets to it quickly. He goes, oh, what, what, uh, what about a happy Corbin, by the way? And uh, what's your deal with him? As Jackie later says, he gives a political non-answer by only letting us what we need to know. Um, he just says that Corbin feels he can be a future world champion someday. He feels Corbin can be a future world champion, and he just needs some guidance. So again, as far as what that guidance will look like, if JBO will be actually on the show, if it's going to be like a Ted DiBiase thing, who, who was on NXT, but largely it was like vignettes and stuff, I guess we'll say. Um, I don't know, I guess we'll find out in due time, and maybe he'll become a new on-air manager, or just help him out a little while, or if Corbin comes back with a new name, new gimmick, hopefully, in time will tell. But that was the, uh, I almost said, yeah, I almost said talking, I almost said the SmackDown Lowdown, then I'm thinking, oh, it's talking smack, it's not. That was the SmackDown Lowdown for September 17, 2022. Uh, decent stuff here. We got not really any answers from JBL on Corbin, but that was an interesting thing of note. Um, all the interviews were very brief, so kind of a very missable edition per usual of the SmackDown lowdown, but I thought the analysis from, uh, Matt Camp and Jackie and JBL was fine. So a pretty passable edition of the SmackDown lowdown here, hearing from, uh, who did we hear from? Shotzi, the Brawling Brutes, and Ricochet. Nothing out of the ordinary, but it was fine stuff. Thank you guys for checking out my review. I appreciate it. If you have missed it earlier, check out my SmackDown audio review from Friday as well, breaking down the full show. Almost 40 minutes of audio with my full thoughts on that episode. And uh, that's about it. You can check out all the other content here on the channel by you know liking this video, subscribing, uh, sharing the video, commenting. All that stuff is greatly appreciated. It does make a difference. Have an awesome one, guys. Have a great rest of your weekend. I'm Graham G.S. Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.